Hello everyone, welcome back to another video of Medtronic. In this video, we will discuss in more detail on how you can customize Medtronic's layout. So again, first thing you need to do is purchase and download Medtronic. And once you've done that, it should look something like this. Now in Medtronic, uh, let's have a look at our live demo as well. All right, in our live demo, um, you may, you guys may know that we have a layout builder right here. And if you click on that, you get to customize the layout of the specific demo that you guys have chosen. Yes. So, um, in this case, like for example, like if I change the header to dark or hit a menu to dark, um, something like that, do a quick preview, these things will change. Like so. Let's put it back. However, um, let's say that you've already output or you've already exported the layout in your project, but you'd like to customize the, the layout a little bit more uh, based on your project's requirements. Okay, so in that case, we need to look into the layout uh, SAS files. So let's look into our IDE and go to demo one. For this example, we go to source and go to SAS. And what we do is we look into our layout folder. Now in our layout folder for every demo, if you look at the demo two, uh, let's a layout here. As you can see, there's, yeah, there are similar SAS files, but there are some differences in certain demos. Like for example, let's look in this. As you can see, it's a lot less than the demo two and even compared to demo one. So if you look into a site, uh, the this a site is where we have our site bar, our, basically our site menu right here. So here is where we um, define the width of it. We define uh, the desktop mode, whether it's, uh, no, not, not whether like, when there's a fixed um, version, if it's a static version, or it's both, or when it's minimized, and so on and so forth. And now how do we read certain things? Like in Wave, we have a custom uh, function here. And how do you read this is in every layout, like in demo one, every uh, demo one or demo two, every layout, uh, there will be a variable SAS file right here. Let's keep this open, like this, yep. So if you look into demo two, there's also variables here. If you go to demo three, there's also variables here. Every demo will have its own variables. Now in these variables, you have all these uh, uh, um, demo or layout variables specifically made for this uh, demo. So this is a demo one's uh, config for layout. And then we have the header config. And then if we scroll down a little bit, we will see, um, let's see here, a top bar and a site config. So how do we read this is, it's basically getting the a site config, which is this uh, variable right here. And then it's going through to the base um, parameter, which is this one, and into width, which is this one. So in this sense that, we are setting the width of um, the site menu to be 256 pixels. Now, the reason why we have uh, the variable set up like this is in case that you guys want to change the, the width or the colors or things like that, you don't need to actually work with the SAS file or the SAS styling files here. All you need to do is just work with the configurations, uh, the variables. So we can just change this number to say 300. Save that. And then let's do a quick compile to see the difference in width. So let's go tools, CMD. And then let's run gulp. All right, it's done. Let's start our localhost. Okay. Hey. 
And now here we can have a look. It's now a little bit larger than our live demo. So we've we have successfully increased the width of our um, um, assigned menu. However, when you minimize it, it's still the same size. Like so. And how we can change that is if we look back into our um, config, we can see our minimize width here. Use 70 pixels. Let's say we increase it to 100 and do a quick um, compile. All right, it's done. Let's look into our. Okay, so if you minimize it, as you can see, it's a little bit larger than our default. Excellent. So that's how you adjust the width of your site. And in here, you can also um, adjust the background colors uh, of the site menu. Now, as you can see, and if you can notice that there is no background configuration set here, that's because if you look into our disk and our index, basically in your HTML file, you notice your layout will have certain stylings to it. In demo one specifically, you have a dark uh, aside set right here. And how we can control this is if you scroll into, if you go into your SAS folders and you go to theme, and inside uh, within the aside folder, you have both dark and light. And what this, uh, what these two files represents is basically if we look into our uh, layout builder, you see both light and dark. Now this um, theme settings or theme configurations is. Um, specifically made or it's only exclusive to demo one at this point of time but in the future we may, we may be including theme colors for all of our other demos all right so how we can want to, how do you want to change the background color is first we can of course just change this to light and it will just work so do a quick refresh and it becomes light but Let's say we want it to remain dark, but we want a different shade of darkness, so to speak. In that sense that we want to do certain things, like we want to make sure that, we want to decide if this dark color is gonna be a custom color or is gonna be a color that's gonna be reused multiple times within your project. If it's going to be reused multiple times in your project, so if we look into dark, you can see it's going. It's going to get the. It's going to get the layout themes and then dark uh, variable. So if you look into right here we will find the dark color. Now this color is a custom color. Uh, what we mean custom color is it's defined as 1E, 1E, 2D. It's a hex color that is defined here. However, if you want that color to be a reusable color, like from the components and, let's keep this open. Yep. And components and let's go to bootstrap. And we go to our colors, which is um, right here, our theme colors. So if you want it to be like one of these, like uh, let's say I want it to be in the dark color of it. I mean the dark variable, which is dark, which is this one here, which is gray 900, which is this color. So this color is is uh, can it can be reused multiple times. So we can of course change this to just dark like so. Let's do a quick compile again to change the color. 
All right, it is done. Let's look into our project. A quick refresh, as you notice that the color is now changed. It's now similar with any uh, dark color within Metronic. For example, like, um, what's using dark actually? Maybe if you go to our buttons, we get to see the different color schemes. Like it's using this color right here. So it's using the same color scheme as that. All right. So that's how you change colors. So if you want to have your own color, you can do so. Now, if you want to have your own like theme, your own um, setup, you can also do that. Uh, what you can do is you can uh, copy this file and we make a new one. Like say you can create a new file, say this is my sus, and then I'll base it off the dark color or the dark theme. So this is my custom theme. And then in here, layout's dark, I want it to be a different thing. So that if you want to switch from one uh, theme to another, you can do it uh, quite easily. So all you do is put a comma there, put say custom, and then put the color you want. Let's just put it as success for now so that it's easier to uh, do a different shape. And then in the new in the new file that we created, we change this to custom. And then if you want to change the perfect score theme, we can, but let's just leave this as that for now. And let's do a quick compile. All right, it's done. Let's do a refresh. As you notice, nothing happened. Now, why is that? So if you recall, in our index, we needed to change this. So now we've created a new aside. So let's minimize this components. We've created a new theme uh, within the aside folder called my theme. So in this case, we need to do this. You don't really need the version number, but uh, if you leave it if you want, we can just take it out like so. And then do a refresh here. All right, the color doesn't seem to be appearing. So now let's look into our theme again to see what else we need to replace. So now let's look into our uh, aside menu theme. So let's look in, let's copy this variable, do a quick search. Okay, right here. And if you scroll down, we see a dark theme. Scroll down a bit more. You see the light theme. So what we need to do is we again need to duplicate the entire dark theme. Copy that. Scroll all the way down past the light theme. Let's do a click here so we can see the line, Let's see where it ends. Here, do a comma, paste it there. Scroll back up. Change this to, say, my theme. And then change this bigger color to custom. Save that, go to this, go to okay. um, Of course, you can also change all these things, like um, all these colors when it's opened, or when it's on focus, or when it's active, or on a hover. Um, this is the font colors, bullet colors, um, text, um, arrows, submenus. So all the configurations for your um, customization is all set here. So let's do a compile again. All right, it is done. So let's look. Hmm. Ah, okay, that's right. Sorry if I wasted your time, your guys' time again a little bit because this is actually buttons.html, and what we've edited actually is index. So 
if you look into this, if we do a refresh here, and then it will change. <laughs> that, that was my bad. Sorry, guys. So, yeah, basically, that's how this works. Now, this idea is similar with all of our other um, configurations of the layout, like your header, like our header or brand colors or base colors or base configurations, footer, header, our header menu. Header menu is this, this thing here. Uh, header mobile, what it looks like when it's mobile. So let's look at that. Like this, this thing here. Uh, the top bar, our main or off canvas, our sub headers, and then we have our variables. So the idea behind it is you first you read the SAS file, you have a look where everything is located. Like all these stylings are usually meant or made for specific um, spacing side of thing, not spacing, uh, specific positions or specific Z index type. Uh, configurations such as uh, a fix aside we need to be uh, position fixed and then we will set the top bottom and left and the z index we're getting from the aside config and if it's static this will happen but most of all or, uh, most of all the uh, the data or the css values comes from the config file and the config file is basically the variables.sas file within the layout folder. And again, how you can view or how you can grab certain things or find certain values is you look at the structure. You have the main variable, parameter one, parameter two, parameter three. So in this sense, if you want to change or view what padding the header is using when the aside is static, you can copy that, go to variables, find the header config, which is right here. And then look at desktop default height. And then we go to desktop default height. This is the value that it's getting. So if you look into headers, you see similar things, just that some of it you have uh, flex, uh, some flex uh, justification, uh, position, and whatnot. But you also see certain variables right here being called from the variables file. If you go into our subheader, you again see similar things. So for example, if you want to change the header height, we go into a header and then we'll see that uh, if the header has a height, as we can see, yep, there's height for the default header, a fixed header, and that's it. So where do we get this is, as mentioned, it's right here. We can change this value to something else and then change the fixed value to again to something else, and then the heights will change. But you guys also need to keep notes that we have a desktop mode and a tablet mode. So desktop mode is, is as what it says, is the height when it's being viewed on desktop, and this height is when it's being viewed on tablet or mobile. Okay, so this is the end of this video. I hope you find you found this video informative. So if you did, please give us a like and please subscribe to our YouTube channel so that the next time we release a new video, you get an update. Please follow us on our social medias. Links will be in the description below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.